Hi, I'm Matt. Welcome back to the 3D Printing Canada YouTube channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Ender 3 V3. Um, one thing real quick to make sure, uh, we have our voltage selector here um, and it's tucked behind where the gantry is going to slot in. Uh, so just make sure, first thing you do is just switch that over. So all we're going to do is put our screwdriver in and click it over so that it reads as 115 volts. So the next part we're going to do is to slot this gantry in. So it just, it's a little tight but you just pull it and it slots right into these two bars I just mentioned and then it clicks forward into place. Once that's into place, uh, we will have two screws on each side, two here and two on the other side. So next thing, I've flipped the printer over so that the bottom uh, is, is visible uh, and we have two sets of screws here and two sets of screws at the same place on the underside as well. Um, so I'm just going to screw these in, the exact same screws as we used for the uh, first set. So the next step after we've screwed those screws in is just to plug in our cables. So we'll start with this motor over here. Uh, we have uh, the motor cable, which is the chunky six port one. And that will just click right into the stepper motor. Uh, and then we have uh, the smaller cable as well. This will plug into the cable that comes off of the X or the Z axis and that will uh, click into place just like that. Uh, next we have this side of the printer, which same thing for our Z motor. We'll just plug that cable in and then we can grab not the bed cable here, which just looking at that, that's a really nice bed cable too. Very nice and chunky, which is good. I like that. Um, <clears throat> we'll grab the other cable, which has our filament sensor and our tool head cable in it. So we can plug this filament sensor cable right into the filament sensor, just like that. And then the tool head cable will plug right into the tool head PCB up top. Once we have that tool head PCB plugged in, I will grab this top strain relief uh, part and we can oops, slot that in place so that it, it is held. We will grab the Bowden tube, which is included, and slot one end into the filament sensor and the other end right into the tool head. So the final step is that we will install the filament spool and the uh, screen onto the front. So we will take this filament spool here and you can see there are the, the notches. So we'll slide this and then just push it down until we hear the click. And then we can take the, uh, put this on the back, we can take the filament spool holder and rotate it into place so that it walks in. Uh, and then we will do this screen. So we have a nice reminder about uh, switching the voltage, which we already did. But if you forgot, there's a nice reminder before you take the, the protective layer off the screen. We've already done that, so we'll peel it off. And then this mount's very similar to a K1 style screen. So all we're going to do is peel this sticker at the front right off. And then we have the cable for the screen here and that will plug into this at the back. So all we will do is click that into place until it locks in. Be very careful as this is a ribbon cable, so it is fragile. Try not to twist it or rip it or anything. And then we have these two pegs here and the two holes. So we will push this in. So we have the machines all set up here now. 
uh, we're going to uh, turn the machine on and I'll walk you through the setup for it. So the first options menu that will pop up will be your language selection. Pretty straightforward, whatever language you speak. I speak English, so I will go with that. Uh, then you have the privacy policy. Feel free to read through that if you want. I'm just, for the time's sake, going to skip over it. Um, next option that comes up here would be network setup. Uh, so you can put in your network credentials, all of that. I'm going to skip that because we're not going to connect this to our internet. Uh, then you have your time zone settings. So here where we are, we are UTC minus five, but uh, you can find wherever yours is um, on Google if you don't know. Uh, uh, Creality Cloud Binding, um, you can either choose Mainland China if you're in China or International for the rest of the world, uh, and then select Next. And now the machine's going to do a self-check. So uh, we're going to make sure place the printing platform just means the uh, magnetic bed and the self-check process is expected to take around 15 minutes, which is from my experience pretty accurate. So we're just going to start and it will do everything on its own now and it will let you know if something goes wrong. So uh, now the self-check is completed as you can see here in lovely text. Uh, so we can just click OK and we are presented with the uh, options menu here. So it's basically exactly the same as all the, uh, the K1s, uh, KE, Tennessee, all that. Um, so I'll run through all your settings real quick just so you can see. So here we have our nozzle temperature um, between zero and 300 degrees. Uh, right here we have bed temperature between zero and 110. Uh, this little button down here has all of our uh, fans. And I like this little diagram as well. It actually shows you where all the fans are. Uh, so that's good. Um, and then that's it for here. We have the temperature graph here. Uh, next option down is our settings. So you can see there's the cooling again. We have extrude retract. So that's putting in new filament. You can set the temperature and then input output new filament. Uh, we have our movement and temperature. So once again, we have hot end, uh, yeah, hot end temperature, bed temperature, uh, print speed. So same as the uh, K1s, you have ultra fast, 125%, 100%. 50% and silent, and then oops, standard, and then you can turn off the motors as well, and then everything's free to move. Uh, here's all of our movement controls. So we have homing on all our axis, and then movement, and that's all for our settings there. Next option down, we have the files. Um, one thing I was very pleased with is that this printer actually did come with a good amount of test prints to do. Uh, so we have like a phone holder, of course, the Benchy, uh, spool guides, lots of things for if you need to replace stuff on the printer, a little scraper. Um, and that's inside this little folder there, uh, which is included with the machine. Let me see if I can get back to there. Okay, there we go. So that's what's locally stored on the machine. Uh, then we have the USB drive, if you had anything on there and the print history, of course. We have nothing on here as of now. Then we have our settings. So there's all your settings. We need to redo the self-check. That's where that is there. Uh, updates, time zone settings, basically everything we went through in the setup. Uh, your updates, uh, reset to default. You can turn on expert mode if you'd like some extra features, things like your Z offset, flow, PID tuning. Um, that's about all. And then we have the network settings, which is of course just you know Wi-Fi or if you're using uh, Ethernet. I don't know if this printer is a Ethernet jack. Doesn't look like it does. So just Wi-Fi for this one. And then we have the camera settings. Uh, you can add a camera as an upgrade for this printer. It doesn't come with it out of the box, but it is an upgrade that you can do. So there's the settings for that. And then here is the uh, help section. So there's your online manual, your FAQ. Uh, we have error history. So if anything happens and it goes wrong, that's where you'll find it. And then you can upload your log uh, from the printer if somebody needs to take a look at it from there. So I got uh, four test prints off in this machine. Um, 
First one I did was, of course, the Menchi. First print they always do. Um, it's not a bad Menchi, it's fine. I think there's a little bit of under extrusion, maybe turn up the temperature a little bit. Um, could have been the filament I was using as well, uh, not sure. But, you know, the, the print itself looks nice. There's just a little, on some of the top surfaces, there's a little bit of under extrusion. But I think that's something that could be addressed and fixed. Um, just worth noting. Uh, the next thing I did was this octopus here. And I don't see those same uh, issues with the um, top under extrusion. So could have been the fact that it was printing a little slower as opposed to the you know maximum speed Benchy. Um, I was also using our standard line filament, um, which does print a little better at high speeds. So that could have been it, but you know, it works really well. I didn't have to do any work to break these legs off. They just popped off the build plate and there it was. Um, cooling looks really great. I don't see any speed artifacts or anything like that. So the input shaping seems to be working really well. Uh, the next one I did was this little um, spiral, uh, spiral tower. I think it's a chess piece. I just blew it up. Um, I don't remember exactly what, what player it was, but uh, it turned out really well. Um, you can see some of the really sharp overhangs here and the printer dealt with them quite well. I was very impressed at how well it managed to keep the, the shape there. Um, the print turned out nice and shiny. This was again our standard line PLA silver. Uh, so it prints good at high speeds. Um, and yeah, there's, there's no stringing. There's no speed artifacts that I can see. A couple here and there, but nothing nothing to be concerned about, nothing out of the ordinary. And then the last print that I did was this Spider-Man bust by Eastman. Um, scaled it up a little bit. I just wanted to try and emphasize the overhang just to see what I could push it to. And it's, it's not bad at all. This is a very steep overhang, as you can see. Like it's, I don't know, maybe 70 degrees, something like that. And the printer handled it quite well. Like it, there is some, artifacts that you can see. We'll get a close-up shot of it, um, but overall it's it's a very good print. And under the chin and stuff as well, it's it's very good. I did put a, bit, a little bit of support under the chin and that broke away really easily. But other than that, the print looks phenomenal. I don't see any of the artifacts. I think this was with the uh, Creality Hyper PLA um, and it looks great. I'm very, very pleased with how it turned out. Now I'm just gonna touch on a couple things about the printer. Um, first of all, it is a little bit loud, is something that I've noticed, um, especially when it's printing at full speed. Uh, it is, it does get up there in noise a bit. It is shaking around quite a lot. So you will want to make sure you have a nice sturdy table for this to sit on. It's going to help a lot. Um, another thing to notice, uh, I'm not sure about this Bowden tube. Um, when I was printing, it seemed to get, you know, tangled up a lot in the back here, kind of underneath, and it gets into these really weird spots. And I just don't know uh, how well that's going to work. Um, so uh, you may want to see if there's anything that can kind of, you know, route the bone, uh, bone tube kind of at the back or at the front that just keeps it a little more sturdy there, um, just so that your filament doesn't break or it's not a really harsh angle inside there or anything. Um, I like the compactness of the machine. Uh, the filament holder is really well made, um, feeds nicely into the bone too. I didn't have any extrusion issues or anything like that. Um, I did forget to tuck this cable back here, which did cause a print failure for me, uh, just because it, it was knocking into the bed, which knocked off one of the parts I was trying to make. I don't think, I think I threw it out, but uh, it was just one of these uh, spiral towers here. It didn't finish quite as well as I wanted it to. Well, it didn't finish at all. Um, so you just want to make, there's a little clip here. Just clip it in there and make sure that you can reach all the way to the end with a little bit of slack. And then you'll be good. Um, the mechanics of this machine are Core XZ. Uh, so what that means, if you're familiar with Core XY, it's very similar to that, uh, except you... So Core XY, you have the X and the Y motors working together, right? So you can move around anywhere there. You just take the Core XY and flip it upwards. So it's the same thing. You can see our, maybe I'll just unplug this. Our X and our Z motors are working together. 
um, the belt path is gonna be the, exactly the same as, as um, you know, core X, X, Y. Uh, but you can see if I move one of them, it'll move diagonally. If I move the other, oops, wrong one, it'll move diagonally in the other direction. Um, so this just helps to, to give you a bit more speed uh, in your X and Z direction. Um, the Y is nice, very stable. I did have to um, tighten down the screws on the magnet here as the printer was a little bit loose uh, just out of the box. Um, but just tighten these up as tight as you can get them without stripping the screw and, uh, and that makes it nice and rigid. Um, helps with your print quality quite a lot. Uh, build plate that it comes with is um, textured PEI on one side and then just bare spring steel on the other. So if you can put down some glue stick or something on this if you want to print on this side as well. And that go just fine. Um, other than that, uh, the machine's very well designed, very well built. It's a very sturdy machine. Like it's not going anywhere if you try and move it. Um, and yeah, I think it's, it's a well built machine overall and a great value for the, the money, uh, especially at the speeds that it's printing at. Uh, it does print a little bit faster than the uh, Ender 3 V3KE. Um, not quite as fast as the K1s, but you know, for a bed slinger such as this, it's, it's not too bad, all things considered. Uh, so uh, hopefully you enjoyed the review and you found it useful. Uh, if you have any questions, please just leave them in the comments down below, uh, or you can you know, call us, email us, whatever you need. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. Um, Leave a like, comment, subscribe.